Why does Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez seem on the verge of tears as she describes how she was almost murdered on January 6th at the Capitol? American citizens are more dangerous than foreign terrorists. You have to, they're literally declaring war on their own population. How's that going to end? She's not entirely putting it on. She seems to mean it. If you're sensing a theme here, there is in fact a theme, and the theme is panic, fear, and it's real. You are looking at leaders who are genuinely afraid of the people they're supposed to be leading. I've got a shit ton of work to do. Yes. Like, why yes. can't you Half of it, the half that's by Republicans in Mississippi. It wouldn't even be hard to begin the process of fixing things, of bringing actual unity to a country that badly needs unity. The word consensus is always used as a plus word. Unity is always used as a plus word. Anything divisive, very bad word. Bipartisan, very good. Partisan, not so good. Cretinism, bullshit, nonsense. The building of a false consensus and the burying of history and the burying of dialectic every day before your eyes in the name of the ideology of objectivity. Who here remembers uh, hearing Ronald Reagan, seeing him called a great communicator in print in a news story? Hands up, anybody? <laughs> Quite a few. Who remembers hearing him called a liar in a news story? <laughs> well, that Ronald Reagan is a great communicator is a value judgment. That Ronald Reagan was a liar is an objective statement of fact. Look at what happened. It was fascinating to watch because I, I watched and I think that that's something that people need to really concentrate on. And I really wish that our elected officials were talking more about that. And the tater tots. Fuck that. <laughs> Nobody cares. What are the implications of a former CIA director talking like this? Nobody cares. And I feel like this should go without saying. So this really is the time to make a decision about how to respond to it. What our leaders do next will define what America looks like. That didn't factor into it at all. That was it. It is hard to imagine a leader saying something more destructive and more reckless. For whatever it's worth, I'm totally for. I hope you get where I'm going with this. Here's the really interesting thing. They seem much more afraid now that Donald Trump has left office. We need to get over it. We need to move on. Oh, Fox is so extreme. The Fox News Channel is so extreme. Oh, Fox is so extreme. The Fox News Channel is so extreme. Maybe that's not something that is, is really that important. With Donald Trump gone, they sense that a period of actual populism has begun, real populism. And they may be right. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't think anybody was listening. It was just for fun. It's very obvious where all of this is going, and it's very, very bad. We're on our way to the hardware store. Part of the solution is to stop talking like this immediately okay cool declaring war on american citizens domestic political enemies more dangerous than al-qaeda what they just wanted the door fixed and it's not just him all the news channels other than this one right now are repeating oh, the, oh my goodness all the networks wow all the networks all the news channels other than this one right now are repeating this now official line that the American government is now at war with its own population. Here's CNN's version. And I used to be fat too, and I can tell you, hey man, this is what I did. I stopped drinking but soda. That's... Maybe that's not something that is, is really that important. It's not gonna make anyone more moderate, that's for certain. Just the opposite. Just real, too threatened, too nuts. It should, I will give you that. It certainly should, but does it? It's terrifying in its stupidity and in its certain effect. Conservatives in Mississippi. Too threatened, too nuts. That didn't factor into it at all. Watch this clip and ask yourself what kind of effect this woman is having on the United States right now. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I uh, I don't do that. It's better for you. It's a very emotional yes. reaction. That period. All right. Really? What effect does that have when you promote group identity, even as you intentionally destroy national identity? If you do all of those things, what kind of country do you get at the end?
Well, you get a scary, divided country. And right. it's in, in many ways, it's the same with interacting with people that are upset with you. With everything going on in the country right now. It is hard to imagine a leader saying something more destructive and more reckless than that on television in a moment as fraught as the one we're in. But there are enough people out there that can. There's going to be someone who has a violent opposition to that idea. The kind of country where you need steel fencing outside the national legislature. This has to be foundational. For once, we're not even going to mock need steel fencing outside the national legislature. Yeah. Like, this has to be, this has to be foundational. Maybe what's important is fixing the door. If you do all of those things, what kind of country do you get at the end? What does this symbolize? It's a symbol. What's it symbolize? Well, the land of the free and the home of the brave, of course. There's value in a little bit of snake venom. You develop a tolerance, <laughs> but if you get a big fat dose, you're dead. Those are racial attacks. Let's stop lying about it. We shouldn't talk that way in public. Those attacks are making people crazy. And by the way, over time, possibly making people dangerous. People have a lot of different fucking ways of looking at the world. And if you want to exist in conflict in perpetuity all day long and just argue with people, I don't want to do that. For real. Too threatened. Too nuts. Definitely do. It's that it's not healthy. This isn't crying fire in a crowded theater. This is using a flamethrower in a crowded theater. But that's not all that's going on right now. There's more. Look around. But it seems right. to me the one thing we don't need at this hypercharged, divided moment in American history is public figures encouraging more division, encouraging us to think of ourselves as members of a group first. It's, you know what I mean? It's like it's a, it's a, the premise itself is false. And, and she's basically saying, give your house or your possessions to someone of a certain color. Again, she's assuming that the person's color is the most important thing. I don't, why would you want to be in the same world as someone like this? Why would you defend this? I don't understand. <laughs> That went way off. Uh, <laughs> the flip side of that is what they'll say is that the problem with some of this is they don't trust the mechanism by which that money is going to be invested. Right? Of course. And I think equality will only come once the community can gain the equity that's been taken from them from, from the beginning. I mean, you're talking about the Homestead Act. You know, all the slaves were freed. They weren't allowed to have their own land. They didn't get their 40 acres and a mule that was promised to them. Andrew Johnson made sure of that. And then we did the Homestead Act. White homesteaders were given just millions of acres of land, which was the equity. Somebody was telling me, I think they were saying that 20% of the, the people from that, of the, of the wealth in that area can actually be traced to the Homestead Act, which explicitly did not include black people. Federal Housing Administration in the New Deal explicitly said you cannot loan these low cost uh, uh, loans that were intended so that white people could gain equity. You cannot give them to black people. This is the most progressive piece of legislation that may have ever happened on the soil of America explicitly excluded black people. The GI Bill in Long Island when everybody was buying into Levittown and they used those low cost loans, explicitly excluded. But until we address that, th there's, there's, equality won't come. So you, I, I think you have to, that to me feels like the root. What I wanted to say before I was cut off is that I think that the issue in our nation is more an intersection of race, of poverty, of national origin. There are multiple factors that are coexisting simultaneously that as a nation we can no longer pick apart and say, um, you know, make generalizations based on black and white because poverty is such a big issue in our nation. And you're right, I'm a first generation college student so I can completely, you know, appreciate what it's like to grow up. Um, you know, slightly above a poverty line and how hard you have to work to put yourself through school. But what she's saying is she's making an extremely important point that is undeniable that still in our nation today, 
African Americans remain some of the most unprivileged groups. Native Americans are among the most unprivileged groups who do not have access to the education, to health care, to um, college, university, equal opportunities in the way that many white Americans do. And that is pretty much what we're dealing with in a nutshell. But at this point, the truth doesn't matter. No show on this channel would ever put that on the air, ever. And if anyone did, people would resign in protest. What matters is who gets to write the history of what happened. All 100 senators know that, the House managers know that, everyone in the room knows that, for one simple reason. History is used to hurt some people and to help other people gain power. History is never neutral. President Trump committed a high crime. But actually, it's not funny. People will believe this crap. Some already do. Anyone who was physically present at the Capitol that day knows it's ridiculous. Trump voters weren't trying to kill her. Neither were other U.S. senators. A lot of the rioters were angrier at Mitch McConnell than they were at any Democrat. To some extent, what you saw on January 6th was an intra-party struggle. Not all of it, but some of it an act of mindless destruction aimed at Republican leaders, born of long, simmering frustration. The people who run the Republican Party don't care about the people who elect them. That has long been true. Republican voters finally figured it out. It's one of the main things they learned during the Trump years. But I have, I have zero idea. I have really trophy assets, and I guess they're disproportionately valuable because of the fact that they're trophies, but I have, I have zero idea. Gambling mostly with investors' money, and counting on his customers to lose theirs. And on January 6th, they exploded. They were literally calling poor Mike Pence's name. He didn't do anything. They were furious with him. It is also an example of how Trump does business. Little of the money at stake is his own. Now, that's not a defense of anyone's behavior, much less a defense of rioting, which, unlike the other channels, we do not support and will never support. It's not even an ideological point. It's just true. That's what happened. When it is understood that a flood of negative emotions in conjunction with a weak and insecure sense of self can trigger a descent into madness, it becomes clear how a mass psychosis can occur. It's as if they were somehow channeling members of Congress. That almost happened. Here is a terrorist attack that did happen. So we observe 9-11, he says. Going forward, we must observe January 6th. Maybe we'll need a memorial on the mall. As Bachelot has said repeatedly in the last 24 hours, and very pointedly, we must, quote, never forget. So please help us. But at this point, the truth doesn't matter. What matters is who gets to write the history of what happens. Honestly, I think you should let me run the country, you run CNN, right. and if you did it well, your ratings would be ask, much better. If I, if I, I ask you one other question, are you worried? That's enough. That's, no, that's enough. President, I, that's well, enough. I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's that. enough. Mr. John Stewart. Yes, ma'am. Not easy. How you hold the you began stuff began by like saying that. we were too hard on people and too All difficult right. or contentious. And that, I think you know. you're, yeah. All right, John Stewart, come back soon. Stop. <laughs> stop, 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 stop hurting America. Okay, now, let me and, and, <laughs> John Stewart, uh, good of you to join us. Thank you very much. The book is America, A Citizen's Guide to Democracy in Action. From the left, I am Paul Begala. That's it for And today. from the right, I'm Tucker Carlson. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. Oh, that was great. He couldn't be taken seriously. This was in a slander lawsuit that they were successful in rebuffing. They said he couldn't be taken seriously, um, that the general tenor of his show should then inform a viewer that Carlson is not stating actual facts about the topics he discusses and is instead engaging in exaggeration and non-literal commentary. That was a quote uh, using, borrowing some of the argument of Fox. And then the judge went on about uh, her findings, which were that Fox persuasively argues that given Mr. Carlson's reputation, any reasonable viewer arrives with an appropriate amount of skepticism about the statement he makes. I mean, even his employer was saying that he could not be trusted to tell the truth. Is that, go is that kind of defense going to fly in the case of these other hosts who trafficked this, uh, who, these other hosts who are people who trafficked the information that Smartmatic is talking about in this lawsuit? Yeah, let me tell you why I... No! Ah! I'm back! Oh, shit! Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Happy Hayden's Day. On November 22nd, 1963, a man called the President of the United States, passionate and committed communist, murdered Lee Harvey Oswald. There were a lot of questions about what happened, but in 1959, it's not for a moment.
who talked incessantly. Instead, almost immediately, the media began spinning a very different story. And yet many Americans never really understood what Lee Harvey Oswald believed. The explanation was never very precise. President Kennedy had been murdered by conservatives, possibly by conservatism itself. So right-wing Kennedy was killed Lee Harvey Oswald. So Lee Harvey Oswald never, as they often put it, in 1959, not for a moment, murdered by conservatives. It was not a car. Still, Trump owes more than $3 billion. The threat a short time later, referencing wife Heidi Cruz. There's no coherent way for them to say, but all of our guys who have done it and done it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Slut shaming Melania Trump. My point is very simple. Mm -hmm. The standard the Democrats have put forward, because we don't like Donald Trump, he's guilty. Uh, look, Donald Trump didn't bail out. Melania Trump. Kamala Harris did. Politically weaponized. In the end, the coordinated lying paid off. We're watching our own history being written before us right now. He gave up his American passport and defected to the Soviet Union. There, he married a Russian woman and lived in Minsk. Three years later, he returned to this country and immediately began attending rallies in support of Fidel Castro, the communist leader of Cuba. In the fall of 1963, Oswald traveled to Mexico City and met with KGB agents there. A few months before, in Dallas, he tried to murder General Edwin Walker because Walker had given speeches attacking communism. Think very clearly, they've been lying to people. We are watching our own history being written before us, right now. All right, I'm out. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer. So please help us. Given I've indulged you, but you're out of order, and we're going to move on. Cause that's all we had planned for the show. If you're stupid, do whatever. You could die or live forever. I don't know what to do now, we just don't know. It's time to let this go. This is political theater designed to appeal to the bumper sticker patriots of the country. Those people who love the symbol more than what the symbol is supposed to represent. We it's definitely one that, uh, it's one of those terms that you're going to have to say that a lot, especially if you're talking to, you know, that's interviewing you, because they're not going to say it. They're going to be like, I'm going to make you say that. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> I've had people be like, is it racist if I say your channel name? But this whole idea of we build our society economically from the top down. Yes. Like, that's the shit that's got to change. Right. I guess right. You're, you're right. You're right. Yes. Like, that's the shit that's got to change. Right. I guess right. You're, you're right. You're right.